Well, now that we've gotten the tools and the templates out of the way, it's time to make your first Torino piece. And we're gonna start with the ground tile. That's that layer of, of squares that you see that all the walls are put on. We're gonna do that first. And we're gonna use our new shiny grid tile jig and scoring sled jig and scoring sled to make this a snap. So let's get started. So always make sure you're using ready board and uh, we're gonna peel the paper off of both sides. If you live in a country where ready board is not available, I will provide links and resources to that either in the manuals or on Discord. Sometimes depending on your region, it may be hard to find something um, or we may have not sourced it yet for your region. So uh, yeah, definitely check the Discord for that. It doesn't matter if you get the black ready board or the white ready board, since the foam underneath is the same color, white. And we're gonna start by making one small grid tile first. This small grid tile will be used to help build other pieces and can also be used as like a ledge in your setups or the second story of a building. So it won't go to waste. But all the techniques I'm gonna show you in making this small tile will be applicable to all grid tiles. We'll start on that first by measuring out the size of our grid tile, which is going to be the width of our grid tile jig. It's also going to be the height of it. It's going to be square. So we're going to use the grid tile jig itself to measure out where we're going to cut out the base for the grid tile. Now, once you've gotten this cut out, we're going to make two guidelines, one horizontally and one, one vertically. So line up the jig on the end here and then make a mark onto the side. It doesn't matter if it's a left or right, just as long as you do the same side of the rib on each one of your marks. So here I'm doing it on the left side and then just draw a line there. This will keep us vertically in line with the rest of the tile. Then we're gonna do the same thing horizontally and just do just to the side of the rib. Here I'm doing it on the right side and just make sure you do the same thing on the bottom one. And now that you have those vertical and horizontal guidelines, you can put that aside and it's time to cut some squares. You're gonna need 36 squares for this little uh, tile, but generally what I do is I cut a few extra. Like you'll see here, I cut down this sheet of foam board, which is larger than my grid squares. So I'll automatically have uh, a couple extra squares in case one of the squares uh, is a little bit, you know, misshapen. And we'll use our grid scoring sled jig to cut those strips into squares. Um, I generally think it's a good idea to cut off the edge of the strip before because sometimes they're a little bit crooked. And you'll notice here that I'm using the scoring sled itself to line up the end of the strip to the end of the jig. You can see it goes pretty fast. Later on, when you get more comfortable with this technique, you can do two strips at a time, and you'll see that when we go to make the large tile. And then we're just gonna confirm where that rib is in relation to our guideline. So we wanna put the square right next to the rib. So I'm drawing out where the rib actually is in both directions, so I make sure that I actually place that first square down in the right place. That way the grid squares will be centered on the uh, grid base. Now it's time to put down the first square. Now let me just show you here, this is a good amount of hot glue. You can see there's not a whole lot on there uh, because we're not relying long-term on the hot glue to hold this grid square in place. Uh, that's what the paint and glue mixture is for. Basically the hot glue is just holding the, the square in place until that happens, until we put that grid and paint on there. Now, if you notice, that is a lot of hot glue. You do not want to put that much on there because if I put that down on the square right now, it would start buckling and bubble and you'd have like a bowl shaped square um, and all that hot glue would seep out into the spaces between the squares. So a little bit of glue is good. Just a little bit like that is great. A little kind of thin layer. And we're going to place our first square along those guidelines uh, next to where we had marked for the ribs. You can see the little marks there on the left and underneath the square. Then we're going to place the second square right next to the first square. Now after we've placed this second square, we're going to start the pattern that is going to help you make the entire tile. It's very simple. You're going to turn the, the grid tile itself by 90 degrees, place the square, and then check it horizontally and vertically, and then repeat that process. So you're going to turn the tile 90 degrees or a quarter turn. You're going to place the square. And then you're going to use a grid square jig to make sure that the square is positioned correctly horizontally and vertically. 
And then you start the process again. Turn it 90 degrees or a quarter turn. And then place your square. And then check the position of that square horizontally and vertically with a jig. And then start again. So now why are we turning? Well, it's an easy way to keep you from accidentally nudging the last square that you glued down. It's to ensure that basically if the hot glue isn't completely dry, that the square that you just placed won't get misplaced accidentally while you're placing the next square. It's just an easy way to make sure that your tile comes out consistent and even. Now, just as an aside, you'll notice that all my squares aren't perfect. All my positions aren't perfect. And you know, that is okay. That is what Torino is all about. Torino is about being forgiving of little imperfections. So don't sweat it. It's really okay. You'll see like, look, as this thing goes on, there's stuff that looks kind of way out. Like that last tile I just placed here, the gutter's a little weird, but it's okay. Uh, Torino is built to be forgiving of human error. So don't obsess too much about positioning and all that kind of stuff. Let the jig and your procedure do the work. Just remember to turn the tile, place the new square, check it horizontally and vertically, and then start again. Now I'm showing you making this little uh, grid tile so you can kind of get an idea of how long it does take to make. I'm not going particularly fast here. Uh, generally, you know, I have been making grid tiles now for years and I've made, I mean, I'm, I've made hundreds of them. So I'm generally pretty fast with it, but here I'm basically taking my time and showing you, I'm taking my time to illustrate all the different procedures and, and what to do. Um, but this should give you a, a decent idea of how long it would take you to make one of these tiles. Um, since what I'm doing right now is what you would essentially be doing. Not to give away the ending, but I think I make this tile in about 10 minutes. Um, maybe it'll take you 15 minutes. And just to put that into some context, this small tile that we're making is one quarter the size of the full size 20 inch by 20 inch tiles. So if this one takes you 15 minutes to make, uh, it's probably going to be a fair estimate to say that a full size tile will take you about an hour to put to, to glue the squares down on, which, uh, you know, may sound like a long time, but you have to remember the grid squares that you make these grid tiles, uh, they get a lot of use. They are the one piece of Trano that is used in every single setup. So, you know, you make a couple 20 inch by 20 inch tiles and they will be on your table all the time. Another question I get asked a lot is, why do you start in the center and spiral out? Well, it's very simple. If you start in the center and spiral out following the guidelines, your grid tile will stay much more square and much more correct than if you, say, started in one corner and went across and did rows. That is a recipe for disaster because basically if you're putting the squares down one after another, left to right, left to right, and then kind of like you would write sentences in a paragraph, um, you will inevitably have a tile that's going to be off by the end. It's because you can't really, in a meaningful way, when you do it that way, check the position of those squares in any meaningful way because you just have a line of squares with no way of checking the vertical alignment of those squares. So you always want to do this spiraling pattern where you start in the middle and you spiral out from the middle, turning your square. It just makes for a much more consistent square and a much better square. You know, we have our community Discord and I've seen folks on there that uh, jumped right into Trano, were so gung-ho and enthusiastic, and they post a picture of their first grid tile and they go, why is it, why is it looking so funky? And I immediately know whether or not they followed the spiraling pattern or they did it kind of like left to right, like you were writing sentences in a paragraph. Uh, it's very obvious. They just drift over time and the, the tile, you know, while, while Torino is forgiving of human error, it's not that forgiving. Um, that is just, that is going to be a grid tile that you won't be able to use. So definitely stay with this pattern of 
turning the tile 90 degrees, placing your tile, checking it horizontally and vertically, and then repeating that step. So now after we make this little tile, we're going to make a full-size tile. And you'll notice that the procedure to make that tile is identical to this one. It's just you're going to do it for a longer amount of time. But as you can see now too, we're almost done with this tile. We, we only have a few more squares to put in there. Um, and it's been pretty, pretty quick. Um, you know, that is definitely helped by the fact that uh, cutting grid squares now is is somewhat trivial and, and a lot faster using the scoring sled. If you're coming from version one of Torino, you know that that was one of the, the pain points for a lot of people. You know, you had to use a grid square template to trace out the squares and then cut them out by hand. It was a lot more labor intensive than I would have liked, uh, which is why the idea of the sleds, uh, this is something that I had gotten from uh, doing woodworking where sleds and jigs, you know, make your life a lot easier. Uh, most of the most of the technology and most of the research of making the grid scoring sleds was trying to figure out how to make one that would work out of foam board and also would be consistently sized and would be easy enough to make by folks who, you know, don't spend thousands of hours <laughs> working with foam board like I do. Um, so I hope that uh, it, it works out well for you and, um, and makes your life easier. Um, I didn't talk too much in, uh, in the tools video about the other scoring sleds that are going to be used in Trano. For instance, uh, in the basics manual, there is also the two inch scoring sled, and that's the one that you would use to cut out strips of walls. So, you know, it may not sound like a big deal to make a scoring sled, you know, just to avoid having to measure out two inch strips of foam board, but you might be surprised because, you know, anything you do that's a labor savings like that, um, it really pays dividends over time, especially if you're planning on building a lot of Trano. And there's an interesting thing that happens when you use tools that make your life easier, you tend to use them more and you tend to use them to make more stuff. You know, when you're not dreading having to sit and cut tiles out for grid tiles, or you're not dreading uh, sitting there, you know, making walls, you're going to make more of these pieces, which means you're going to have a bigger, better, more fun Trano set just because you invested a little bit of time in making tools. And uh, later manuals, especially the Terreno Modular Grid Tiles manual, make great use of uh, scoring sleds for different things. Um, and you'll see that, uh, that in future videos. So you can see now we only have about five tiles left. And um, yeah, so you can see they're hanging off of the edge there. That's okay. We're going to trim those down a little bit. In fact, we are going to make that edge look super great later on, but we're going to wait until we've painted the top of this tile to do that. Why? Well, because if you try to cut the border to make it look nice now, um, just because they're only held on by hot glue, some of them may fall off, but that won't happen if you paint the top of the tile first, because then that paint glue mixture will fuse those squares onto the grid tile itself. And uh, then you can cut it without uh, worrying about uh, breaking off any tiles. So we're coming up to the last four squares here. And these are the ones that are gonna be the hardest to place because you only have a quarter of the square itself to glue down onto the edges here. So just pay a little bit of extra attention to uh, these last four squares to make sure that they get positioned well and don't get accidentally moved when, uh, when you're moving the tile around to do the other ones. And you'll notice even though now we have a full tile practically, the grid square jig still fits in perfectly on all of them. And this comes back to the way we built it, which is using that spiraling out pattern and using the guidelines that we drew. 
Once the last two squares are placed, I'm gonna put this aside to make sure it's totally dry because I wanna make sure that a hot glue is set before I try to trim off the edges of those uh, squares uh, on the outside edge there. Um, you also wanna kind of be delicate with that. Like you wanna do multiple strokes to cut them off as opposed to just trying to muscle through them because they, they will tear off at this point because they aren't fully set with our paint glue mixture yet. Now, after this, we will be making the large ground tile, but don't worry, that is not going to be real time. Um, but I uh, just wanted to show you this one in real time because, you know, I get this asked a lot and I want to make sure that people understand that it's going to take a little bit of time, but it's it's not a massive commitment. So here we're cutting off the edges of those squares and you'll notice I'm doing multiple cuts, multiple shallow, gentle cuts, because I want to make sure that those squares don't tear. And there you have it, uh, your first grid tile. And we're just gonna add a stone texture to it using this ball of tin foil. This is just a sheet of tin foil from that Reynolds wrap that I showed in supplies, uh, wrapped up into a ball, and then you just kind of roll it over the, the top of the tile. And now it's time to make the big 20 by 20 inch tile. Now we're gonna start out with three sheets of foam board. Yeah, I know that sounds like a lot, but the reason for three sheets, we're gonna glue these three sheets together. We're gluing these three sheets together because this will make the tile compatible with modular grid tiles, which are three sheets thick plus the squares on top. Now, what we first need to do is after we peel the paper off is cut these to make them square. And the easiest way to do that is to take two sheets and put them at 90 degrees to each other. And then use the edge of the sheet to cut out the piece of foam board below it. And then that will automatically become a 20 inch by 20 inch square. And once you have that first sheet of foam board cut to 20 inch by 20 inches, you'll use that sheet to uh, cut out the other ones. Now keep in mind, they don't have to be perfect. Now you'll notice when you glue these together, you have these bands, you'll see them in the foam board. Like it's almost just like grain and wood. Like you see here, there's horizontal bands. When you glue the two sheets together, you want to have them alternate going left, right, left, right, like these are, and then top, bottom, top, bottom. This is a great way to ensure that your tile stays uh, flat and it doesn't warp. It also gives it more rigidity, so it's stronger. So we're just going to attach and glue these two sheets together with hot glue. Now remember, I'm, I'm turning that second sheet so the grain is vertical and the bottom one is horizontal. And then you just match up the edges here. Don't worry if they're a little bit off because we will be trimming off the edges of the tile to make it nice and smooth. And once you've got that glued on there, just kind of pat it down to make sure that it's well set. And then just turn it over and trim off the edge of that second sheet. Um, so you'll have it flush with the first one. And then you just do the same procedure with the last sheet, remembering to uh, put it in a, the opposite direction of the grain on the one below. So you can see here it's vertical. So the next one we're going to do is going to be horizontal. Matching it up to the edges, patting it down, making sure it's on there well and cutting off the excess. So there you go. Now you have a nice, strong base for your grid tile. This means that you can set up your terrain on it and lift it up off your table and put it aside so you don't have to actually do your terrain setups and break them down each time between sessions. And then we need to mark out our guidelines, our horizontal and vertical guidelines. And the length of our grid tile jig is exactly the position that we need for our guidelines. So just use the jig itself to um, mark out where those two lines need to be and then just use a piece of foam board as a straight edge to draw in the guideline. And you'll notice here I'm going to put the jig back on the on the foam and I'm going to mark the side opposite where the jig is. This is going to help us position that first square when we go to lay it down. And then you're going to do the same thing uh, vertically using the jig as your measurement. And then you're going to draw that vertical guideline as well using your foam as a straight edge. And 
And you notice I'm marking the side opposite where the jig was. And then we're going to take those three cutoff pieces that we cut off to make our base square. We're going to take those three sheets and we're going to cut out our grid squares for them. Now this will give you more grid squares than you need, but I always like to make a little more than I need just in case some of the squares are a little off. Um, I also, once you've gotten a good handle on using the scoring sled jig, you can do two strips at a time. So you'll double your output of squares per cut. Now, these tend to get really, really staticky. Um, there's an easy trick to getting rid of that stat static. Just take your squares and put them in the freezer for 15 minutes, and they will come out nice and static free. And then it's time to place our first square, and we're going to put that square over that X that we drew. So just to be clear, that X represents the side opposite where we measured out the grid square jig. This ensures that that first square is positioned correctly to make sure that all of our squares fit well onto the uh, tile. And then the procedure is the same. We're just gonna start by gluing down that first tile where those two lines intersect and over our X. Let that dry a little bit. Turn our square. And uh, we're basically just trying to have those first four squares put in there and they are going to be on that same side of those crosshairs there. Uh, this ensures that uh, you'll be spiraling out and be even on each side. Now again, you'll notice that second square is a little malformed. It's okay. It's, it's totally fine. And make sure that the square is up against the line, and it is. Looks good. And then the fourth one. And then we're going to start our procedure where we turn 90 degrees place a square, check it vertically and horizontally, and then repeat. So obviously I'm not going to show this for the entire uh, square, but uh, you get the idea. Um, so you can see the procedure is exactly the same. The only difference here is when you get to the outside edge, there's not going to be any squares hanging over because they'll they'll be close to flush with the edge or, or, or you know, a little over. And uh, what we'll do also with this one is after we paint the top, we will also trim the edge of this tile, just like we're going to do for the small one. And you'll see just turning the tile, placing a square, positioning it, and repeat. It gets kind of mesmerizing. The nice thing about making these that I've noticed is since you're relying on the tool and your procedure to do the, the work, um, your brain kind of turns off. Like you get this kind of Zen thing going where, um, you know, usually I'll be listening to a podcast or I'll be, uh, listening to music. And I just really enjoy, uh, that experience because I'm getting something done, but it's really not a lot of mental overhead. And, um, yeah, it's a very enjoyable process after a while. So here is the finished or rather the, the glued down complete tile ready for paint. So if you haven't already, you can get started right now on your Torino journey by downloading the Torino construction manuals at GameGearMaster.com. They are consistently rated five stars and come with a 14 day hassle-free money back guarantee. That means if Torino's not for you, no problem, you'll get your money back, no questions asked. Happy crafting.